anchors of Queer News Tonight. And this evening, we discuss the queer headlines. Milwaukee principal faces lawsuit for allegedly bullying student with gay parents, locking him in a dark room and making homophobic remarks. Cargo ship collision causes bridge collapse in Baltimore. Buttigieg initiated a swift response, but conservatives say his being gay is the cause of collapse. Wait, what? Unitarian Church in Calgary plans drag me to church event for Easter, protesting anti-LGBTQ plus legislation while celebrating inclusivity. The 2024 Lexus International Gay Polo Tournament in Wellington celebrates LGBTQ plus unity. The sport of kings and the world's largest gay polo tournament will be held from April 4th through 6th. Amari, 28, wows American Idol judges with her voice and life journey. After a shaky start, her heartfelt perseverance shines. Good evening, world, and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news broadcasting live and then available on demand. Available on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. It's time to queer up the news for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens unique in LGBTQ plus news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine Happening Out Television Network is a non-profit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our queer culture, the black community, Latino, lesbian and queer women, trans students and youth, seniors, HIV AIDS healthcare, business, social justice, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news, talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. That's right, Dale. So let's meet tonight's anchors at Queer News Tonight. Let's begin with Bonnie Builder from 1947. <laughs> Bonnie is the premier South Florida bodybuilding drag queen and the current reigning Mix Marys. A recent graduate of FIU, she's a trainer and comes to life with a microphone and a spotlight. Bonnie, you're gonna be performing at Miami Beach Pride at the community stage on April 13th. Tell me what's happening. Yeah, so <laughs> we have Miami Beach Pride, we have Capital One, we have April 13th, it'll be on Ocean Drive. I will be performing at 6.30 that evening on that Saturday, April 13th. And Capital One is fabulous. This is the second year that they're having me, and I'm so excited to be invited back because I did really good last year. Some would say I was the best. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about this beautiful look of yours, Bonnie? Um, so, I don't know. You're, you're giving me I Love Lucy vibes, but she didn't have any black friends. So, I'm like, mm. I wouldn't know. I wasn't born back then. <laughs> It's you're a, gorgeous. That's an indication forever, honey. Yeah. You're gorgeous <laughs> and you look amazing. My uh, next up, let's welcome Trinidadi. This artistic talent is a violinist and a pianist with the Miami City Ballet and is the program director for the Seminole Theater Players in Homestead. Trinidadi, our beloved LGBTQ plus led South Florida Symphony, will present a special concert uh, about the movie Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone at the Broward Center on April 5th and 6th. Tell me what's happening. Okay, I don't know if how many how many of you are Harry Potter fans, but if you are this is an event where they play one of the movies and they take the soundtrack out and they replace it with a live symphony orchestra and mm. if you've ever like paid attention to the the soundtrack it's really epic and when you mm. watch it all happening at the same time it's like it's it's pretty wild and the audience is kind of like comic-con so everybody comes in in their you know, dressed up like Hufflepuff and oh, Slytherin cool. and all that stuff. And as soon as an actor gets on uh, uh, in frame, they're like, "Yes, Harry! Yes, Dumbledore!" All that stuff. So it's really fun and exciting. It's one of the most um, 
family friendly like whether you're in it you know as old as this one here or you're as young as like you know five, as you used to be old yeah. like it is it's such a great intergenerational event if that's what you're into so come on out listen there are so many harry potter fans especially in our community it's going to be packed so yeah. get your tickets today for maybe sure. leave the leather versions at home but. no enhance the leather enhance the leather next up let's welcome anchor dino mosquera he joined the miami gay and lesbian film festival back in the 90s and now serves on the outshine film festival's board of directors dino you're the film program chairman for outshine film festival and you're getting ready to start your big miami festival from april 18th to 28th tell me what's happening well, we just released the program for this year's festival starting, like you said, April 18. Uh, it's in Miami at the Silver Spot Cinema in downtown Miami. Love it there. We're opening with a great film, The Turtles. Uh, we have a program full of great films all over. We have a Latino film. Uh, we have Women's Spotlight. We have Men's Spotlight, Centerpiece, a great closing film. We have parties. We have uh, our second venue. We're going to have uh, the first uh, weekend at the Silver Spot and the second weekend at the Regal in Lincoln Road. I'm so, so glad you're back there. We were so worried that that was not going to happen because, you know, the Regal was saying that they were going to close down or move away. But They've been trying to do that for years. They're mm -hmm. such an epic part of Outshine Film, so it just makes a lot of sense. And everybody's represented, so go to outshinefilm.com and find your genre and go see a movie. I go for the parties, but that's just me. <laughs> Next up, let's welcome my brother from another mother, Dale Stein, a celebrated photographer in the LGBTQ plus community. He's the director of music, of music ministry at the famous Unity on the Bay and a moderator of Miami Gay List, South Florida's largest LGBTQ plus Facebook group, mm -hmm. which can also be found on IG as at Queer List Official. Dale, you're the photographer to the South Florida stars, and you're going to be covering the Miami Beach Pride VIP Beach Affair on world famous South Beach on April 12th. Tell me what's happening. Well, you know, I love the VIP cocktail party. It's super fun. The last few years, they started doing it on the beach. They used mm -hmm. to do it like in a venue inside. But like three years ago, I think it was just post pandemic or something, they started doing it outside on the beach. And it's been really wonderful and fun to be outside and part of the whole experience on the beach. Yeah. So this year, Jessica Wilde, uh, our Barico sister from RuPaul Drag Race, uh, is going to be there as a performer. Mm -hmm. And uh, legendary, very well known DJ Robbie Leslie is yeah. going to be spinning. And uh, Kimberly Nicole is performing. And it's great. You know, it's always like a homecoming kind of vibe there. You see people you haven't seen in a long time, even if you just saw them. <laughs> Like a month ago, it's a mother party, but <laughs> it feels like a homecoming. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes, Miami, Be Miami, uh, Miami Beach Pride is going to be incredible. So make sure that you go to some of the events, all the events, mm -hmm. but the Starts VIP the is the something. kickoff. Yeah. Yeah. So well, that's going to be fantastic. Y'all better be there. Y'all better be there. And of course, this is tonight's lead anchor, Faye What? She's a legendary events host, television and radio personality, and the host of the Faye What Show on Mondays at 9 a.m. and then On Demand. Faye, Lesbian Thesbians is an interesting name and organization, and they are hosting a spring fling tea dance at Hagen Park April 6th. Tell me what's happening. Yeah, so I love, I love the Lesbian Thesbians, right? I just interviewed Miss Carol Wartenberg, and she was on my show Monday morning, um, and she is the founder of the Lesbian Thesbians, and it's not just for lesbians, all right? Let's just make that clear. They are bringing such incredible programming to South Florida and to Wilton, right? So there's something for everyone, and the spring fling is going to benefit their theater group and it's going to be like Bonnie said at the community center at Hagen Park and it's going to be from 3 to 7 p.m. It is a community so it's a tea dance baby all right from 2 to 6 p.m. It's going to be a whole lot of fun get your tickets it's only like 20 bucks and it's going to be a fun fun time April 6th so lesbian thespians get your tickets and I will see you there. So we are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points of the queer news for today. First, this evening, let's queer up students and youth culture. Elementary principal sued for threatening to kill first grader because of gay parents. A principal at Milwaukee Public Schools is facing serious allegations of bullying and harassment towards a first grade student with gay parents. Kasongo Kalambula, Kalambula, who is currently the principal at Bethune um, at Academy, is accused of targeting the student with physical and verbal mistreatment during his time as an assistant principal at Milwaukee French Immersion School, MFIS, between 2018 and 2022. The allegations have led to a federal lawsuit against Kalambula. According to the lawsuit, Kalambula reportedly confined the student in a dark room for over an hour in the spring of 2019, threatening harm if the incident was disclosed. 
In spring 2021, following bullying by peers due to his parents' sexual orientation, Kalambula allegedly expressed homophobic sentiments, branding gay individuals as evil, destined for damnation and going to hell. Subsequently, when informed of the parents' concerns by a new MFIS principal in September, Kalambula purportedly physically confronted the child in a school hallway and forcefully ushered him into an office. Despite repeated attempts by the student's parents to address the issue with Milwaukee Public Schools, they assert that MPS administration failed to provide supportive services or protective measures. Allegedly facing hostility from staff, the parents eventually transferred their child to a school in a different district. Additionally, the lawsuit contends that at least three other LGBTQ plus families withdrew their children from MFIS due to Kalambula's discriminatory behavior. You know, this, I could just see everybody at the table nodding their head and just complete despair. This is a child. Like, we're constantly talking about bullying and, you know, anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric. But this is a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a six-year-old max. And this and this horrible adult is doing this, you know? That kid is going to have PTSD. These are scars. These are scars. These are scars. These are, scars. These are trauma. Almost. This is yeah. complex PTSD. Yeah, yeah. This will affect this poor kid for the rest of his life. And he's not even gay. And then <laughs> uh, the terror that the other students must be living in to see that this is what can be done to a child because of his... Parents? Because he's different. Because his parents are different. It's, it's mind-boggling. So that just, they almost be just be living in fear. All the yeah. Where is the yeah. school district? I want to know. I mean, what, what are the Milwaukee. consequences? No, but what are they doing with yeah. somebody oh. in their district like this? I mean, probably they, promoting him. They, <laughs> probably <laughs> right. Probably no. You may Milwaukee be right. Milwaukee is the most liberal. Yeah. 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 I mean, the cruelty, the yeah. poor. I mean, and, and the rest the of word, the class. Cruelty, right yeah. there. You put that kid in a closet for an hour and a half in the dark, like that's abuse. Yeah, this goes far beyond just like a, a disciplinary action within the school. This is a criminal action. You're right. Yeah, yeah. To confine a child and that's child that's torture. Well, and then yeah. to tell them and then, and then to tell them don't tell anybody. I, and then they right. call us groomers, right? right? Then they call us groomers. Right. Acting like the fucking principal from Matilda. Um, <laughs> Palambula, I just want to say, you can go fuck yourself. And I mean that, like, from the deepest pit of my ball sack. Like, the fact that you took this child innocently and tortured them and want to, like, condemn the child, the parents, all the queer people in the environment. Despite how you were raised, despite where you're from, you're in America, and we got a host of issues, but, like, we're not doing that shit to our fucking children. Or at least we shouldn't be. So this should not be the precedent of how a principal treats their students. So I guess he, I hope he gets reprimanded, and, uh... I hope he serves jail time. Jail time! He touched that fucking child! Yeah. No. Dang I mean, and again, permanently scarred that poor yeah. child. Yes. That is, you can't, you know, how do you come back from that, you know? And, and like and you the said, the other kids! And, yeah. And the whole family unit. I mean, they're all traumatized. I mean, they have been, and there are multiple children being removed from the school because of this, this environment. You know, and it's sad because when we do these stories, my first thought is, parent, just get your kid out of that damn school, right? But that's not fair. Right. And that's, and that's, and that's yeah. not also sometimes just not easy. Right. And you know? And he's going to do it to other, par other where children. Where are the moms for liberty, whatever these women that are looking for books to ban? <laughs> where are they? Those you five should, ladies are very busy. You they should be protecting these children. Children, I mean, this is your responsibility. Right. Where are you that you are but more concerned about? Gay, they don't care. Right. They don't care. So right. they're, you know, they're disposable. So sad. Yeah. Next, let's clear up the USA view. Conservatives say Baltimore Bridge collapsed because Pete Buttigieg is gay. Early Tuesday morning, a cargo ship collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, causing a section to collapse. The cause was attributed to a power issue on board. One video captured the ship striking a bridge column, leading to its dramatic collapse. Rescue efforts ensued as workers repairing potholes and vehicles were affected. The U.S. Coast Guard and local emergency responders reported two survivors and six missing individuals, all now presumed dead. Governor Westmore of Maryland disclosed that Buttigieg reached out to him at 3 a.m. on Tuesday, highlighting the swift federal response to the incident. President Biden, speaking from the White House, pledged extensive federal assistance for recovery and reconstruction efforts, emphasizing the port of Baltimore's vital economic importance and the ch challenges ahead in rebuilding essential infrastructure. Buttigieg echoed the pre president's commitment and acknowledgement the ardu acknowledged the arduous path to recovery. Despite these efforts, some sought to exploit the incident for political gain. One conservative ex-account named U.S. Ministry of Truth posted, quote, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg to address Baltimore Bridge collapse as soon as he's done chest feeding, unquote. A sort of anti-gay joke conservatives like to crack. 
George Santos also jumped on the bandwagon, attributing the bridge collapse to Buttigieg's discussion of racism in 2021. Social media is active with anti-LGBTQ plus comments about the gay secretary of transportation and actions on the bridge collapse. First, I want to put it out there that there is absolutely no merit to this story. Sometimes there are stories that have grains of truth. Pete Buttigieg did not address this bridge collapse and say anything about this bridge being racist, anything woke. All he did was pledge his support and uh, corroborate the president's support of rebuilding the bridge. So there is nothing to the effect of, of wokeness w with his response to that bridge. What they're referring to is some of his comments in the past when he was talking about how bridges historically at times were designed in ways in part to keep out certain demographics from certain areas. Mm. That's the only thing that he had mentioned. And about that's fact. That. That's it, not something that he yeah. made up either. Exactly. And this, these are comments from, you know, many years ago when we were talking about these subjects more with the Black Lives Matter movement. So you have somebody like uh, this is clearly just a pot shot, an anti LGBTQ plus Pacha and somebody like George Santos, who is gay, decides I'm just going to make fun of Jump him on the for being gay mm -hmm. and making chest feeding remarks and all of this stuff. Disgusting. I mean, when you think that they can't sink any lower right. and you have just this week, uh, I know it's not the topic, but you've got the Republican nominee, uh, presidential nominee coming out with a Bible that only he endorses. And you have these people in Congress that are just saying blatant anti LGBT comments that have nothing to do with what's going on instead of expressing the absolute tragedy of what happened. Yeah. It right. takes you know, so much but, away yeah. from the people yeah. who are really who have really suffered and will suffer yeah. as a result. I mean, the the victims, the people who have died. I mean, it just it completely takes away from the truth of what's going on. However, in in a positive note about this, I've been watching, of course, because I'm a kind of a news junkie, and of course, I just let me just say it now, here and now, I cannot wait for Pete Buttigieg to be our president. Aww. Oh my gosh, I'm he's so presidential. He has been. He's been on the news like nonstop, of course, because he's doing all these press conferences and he's so well spoken. He's so he so knows what he's talking about and what the intention is. And he's so clear and um, and he has such empathy and compassion. I, I think it's just fantastic. That's a mm. the fact, it's a bright light in a very, very dark, dark, dark yeah. story. No, this, the whole scenario is super sad. I mean, so, you know, when we all woke up to this, it was like, oh, my God, those poor mm -hmm. people. How many people were on the bridge? Blah, blah, blah. Thankfully, you know? not many. And Thankfully, thank not goodness, because it was like three in the morning or something. But, what? you know, when um, when I first heard this story that we're talking about today, I thought about all the, the national casualties and things that have happened in the world that in some way, shape or form is always blamed on us. Right. 9-11, right. Katrina, all these horrible Even things. Even when it happens in happen. red states, red states. It's still our fault, right? Because we have that much power over the universe. You know, I mean, come on, you know, um, the chest feeding comment really pisses me off. Right. Because if you were to tell a woman that like you would get so much backlash for it. And that's just not right. Right. There are two parents taking care of their newborn kids. Right. I mean, that's just disgusting to say that. Um, you know, George Santos, shut the F up. Like, I just don't want you to tag anything. OK, go just stop talking. Go, go away. away. Disappear. Go to some other country where you. Yeah. You know, it's just too much, you know. Uh, you know, Pete Buttigieg shows up. He suits up and shows up, right? As soon as he was told about this, he was there, right? Unlike our governor here at Florida, that we have Surfside happen, we have hurricanes happen, we have all kinds of shit happening here, and DeSantis is way too on a book busy. Tour, book to tour. I'm selling my book. I'm on a book tour. I'm too busy. You know, these are the people that we look up to. Really? I, I, I'm, I'm blown away. But this is, this is open season for this childish mockery. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened when we have somebody like Donald Trump running for president. Yeah. Somebody that just call, you know, very juvenile, the, the way that he picks a, a mock name for everybody that he doesn't like. And he goes publicly and he makes like a bully. It, it doesn't yeah, a bully. It doesn't matter if it's a man, if it's a woman, if it's a child, if it or Somebody a disabled, disabled. person, yeah, at all. he goes out and, and, you know, mock them publicly and humiliate them. That's what happened with this guy, U U U.S. Ministry of uh, mm -hmm. Truth, whatever that is. How how sad that this is the current state of our politics, mm -hmm. that in the middle of a tragedy that strikes a community, 
a vital community, somebody goes publicly to mock, you know, the, the, the transportation secretary. Yeah. Why don't you apologize? Why don't you show empathy for yeah. the six show people support. that are that are missing and their families, and yeah. their families you know, instead of being mockering, you know, the uh, Pete Buttigieg, yeah. you know? My only hope from this, and I think this is happening, is that even people who are homophobic are looking at this and saying, all right, this even crosses a line for me. <laughs> like, this is just crazy. Like, even if I agree with you, like, I just, th this is, just feels wrong. Right? We're million, like, yeah, like, like, they're still going to hell, like, they but they weren't the million, reason. Right? Exa exactly. Exactly. And that's my only hope for yeah, this I mean, coming election. Is right. This is, yeah, yeah, this is all crazy. Like, They've said worse shit a million times over way back in the day, and they, they people still not getting it. So this, I don't know if that's going to happen. This is classic Pat Robertson and Graham. No, that other, yeah. Right, and those, the televangelist is classic. Why don't we blame COVID on Donald Trump? We should, you know. It, why don't we blame it on him? Why is it to always be the gay? I mean, community? a lot of people died because of right. him, so we yeah, could. Right. <laughs> so we we could just, you know, blame him on that, but we well, don't go that low. His, his base doesn't even think COVID's real anymore. It's like you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a long Bonnie, what's there are lost cause. Let's get positive. Next, let's court religion. Yeah. <laughs> this church will hold Easter drag service to stand up to anti-LGBTQ plus bills. To show support for Calgary's LGBTQ plus community, a Unitarian church will host a drag show during its Easter Sunday service. The Drag Need a Church event aligns with both Easter and the International Trans Day of Visibility, honoring the contributions of trans individuals while highlighting ongoing challenges. Additionally, the service will serve as a protest against proposed legislation in Alberta, Canada, endangering the rights of transgender youth. This inclusive initiative aims to promote acceptance, celebrate diversity, and advocate for equality within the community and beyond. Reverend Samaya Oakley of the Calgary Unitarians emphasized inclusivity while talking to the Edmonton Journal. She said, quote, the presence of individuals within the 2SLGBTQIA plus spectrum is undeniable in every community, end quote. A misproposed legislation by Alberta's conservative government, concerns arise regarding LGBTQ plus rights. The measures aim to restrict gender affirming health care for minors and limit transgender student participation in sports. Additionally, parental consent would be required for name, pronoun changes, and sex education classes. <laughs> Oakley's remarks underscore the importance of extending love and acceptance to all individuals, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity, in the face of legislative challenges to LGBTQ plus rights in Alberta. As a drag queen reporting the story, can I be the first to say, for Easter, <laughs> drag me to church, baby. Now, let me educate you really quickly. So I did have to say, what was it, 2SLGBTQIA+. The 2S stands for Two-Spirit, which is a common uh, nomenclature in Canada that they use to contribute to the naming of their queer community. So we use, we start with LGBTQ. They include the 2S, which is two spirit, spirit. Two. Two spirit <laughs> um, which is an indigenous uh Reference. Reference. So with the story, I think it is incredible. I love when religious people get petty for the right reasons. <laughs> there is no reason that we can't celebrate Trans Day of Inclusivity and Easter on the same day. There are some religious trans people who believe in the resurrection of Christ. I'm still on the fence about it. Don't tell my mom. But I think this is a great way to celebrate both. You get to celebrate <laughs> the community that traditionally wants to do Easter. You get the traditional crowd mm -hmm. and you get the queer crowd and you bring them together. And it's just like fabulous time. And I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, me and Dale both go to the same church. We go to Unity on the Bay, which is a very progressive sh church. It's not a gay church. It's not a queer church. It's just, you know, when you grew up and you went to church and they always had that sign that said all are welcome, but it was actually bullshit, right? Because it was just all are welcome, but not you, you or you, right? right but this really is. Unity is that way. And like, that was why I was drawn to it 20 years ago, because you could see a drag queen that just worked all night and just came into first service with a five o'clock shadow, like, hey, I got to be here for the Lord, right? So, you know, and, you know, and, you know, Miami Beach Pride, we had on team we're, we're, And we're one of the sponsors. We sponsor Pride last year and this year. Well, and so, and we had Auntie Mame, a drag queen on our float, and that was always like initiative. We've got to make sure yeah. to have everybody represented on our float, right? You know, but there's always religious uh, fanatics that are always going to have an issue with that kind of stuff, you know? So it takes like a community like Unity on the Bay or this church to say, F you, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to support the communities that we love and we represent, and we're still going to do Easter big. You know, why, why not have an Easter egg hunt? You know, like why not do all the wonderful, fun things that you do on Easter? 
Easter and also celebrate Trans Day of Visibility. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, I, when we think of the U.S., only the only country, you know, particularly in the first world and in North America that fights this kind of fights, you know, the and Canada, which is to many of us, is a beacon of, you know, progressive. And it, it does it does not always occur that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Canadians have to also deal with mm -hmm. the right wing and the extremists. Canada's huge, too. Yeah. And <laughs> look, Alberta is going through this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though they have uh, uh, the fantastic, good looking on top of that prime minister and very liberal, he's adorable. He's yeah. He's yeah. Adorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the backlash of the right, right. wing is happening all right, over. Right. But it's happening well, okay, and they're fighting it. I'm definitely. I definitely want to know what Trini feels about this because, you know, like he was raised evangelical, right? So he's kind of still brainwashed about the shit, right? Ooh. So it's oh. always good to hear what he says because he's still learning as Ooh. he goes. He's still in his, on his journey. Okay, thank so you know for that wonderful <laughs> introduction, <babe. laughs> I know so. that you flinched when I said Easter and, Ooh. you know, and TDOV um, together. You flinched. So Yes, I know. did. Mm. And it's not for the reason that you think. Okay. Like, I, I actually am very enlightened when it comes to what is said in the Bible and how it, people can look at it, like a, a church like Sunshine Cathedral can look at it and say, you know, we can be inclusive uh, of gay people and, and it can mean this, whatever. My journey away from church was that I, after doing all the research I could do for 10 years, I felt that this was not real and I didn't feel that it was an inclusive thing and to try to make it into something that it was not. You didn't feel uh, what was an inclusive? The Bible? Or, I'm the, sorry. Yeah, that the Bible is oh, inclusive okay. of gay oh. people and like, you know, what, what we kind of call gay and gay culture now. I don't think that it is. I don't think that it should be believed as literal. But the, I don't yeah, believe but the in Bible is just, just a reference. It's just a reference. Well, and the Bible right. has been translated 528,000 times, so, and they exclude mention of LGBTQ on purpose. Sure, but the point I'm kind of trying to make is that for people who do have a more traditional feel of that, that are gay, are part of the LGBTQ plus community, right? I don't know how I feel about a drag show and entertainment kind of thing going on on a a sacred holiday, if that is what is sacred so to you. So you would be against the Easter I, egg hunt? I also think that... No, no, I'm just... No, 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 I, I mean, I'm get to that. But the also conflating, like, the drag thing with, with transgender, which is, for me, two very different things. And to, like, have a, a drag and, show... And be. It's like, they, yeah, they can have a cross-section, yeah. but at its face, they're not they're the same. They're, they're, they're two things, completely. separate yeah. things. Yeah. Right. And so on a day that is supposed to be kind of the highest... Um, holiday. Holiday. Yeah. If you believe in that, if, I could tell you if I did believe in that, that would be a little bit too much of an entertainment like thing for me to, to, to buy into. And, but I would love if we took away the, that entertainment drag show element of it and put in something that was more about trans people and like the love of Christ for that and make it a, a, a bit more of a, a serious kind of thing, I would be into that. And let me, let me, preacher. let me, let me take this. Um, cause I'm gonna save these bookings for my drag sisters. First of all, Church can be a spectacle a lot of the time. I grew up in the church, a and a lot of it's time it's showmanship. It's coming up in your best church lady drag or your best pastor drag, going up in front of the congregation and putting on a performance, right? So the drag performer can do the exact same thing for the exact same message. If they are performing for the sake of Christ, there are a lot of drag queens who believe in Christ, the Lord, and the Bible. They should not have their opportunity taken away because people feel like it's not serious. It's serious to them. This is their art form. This is how they choose to celebrate the Lord on that day. So I think this is an appropriate occasion for them to do that. And I respectfully disagree. Oh, but right. it's, a, it's a protest. So <laughs> That's right. Everybody has the right to a wrong opinion. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. Next yeah. Topic. Next, let's square up sports. Polo League brings all the gays to world's biggest LGBTQ plus polo tournament. When Chip McKinney relocated to Los Angeles 20 years ago, he struggled to find his place. But a polo lesson at Santa Barbara Polo Club changed everything. Now, as a head of the Gay Polo League, he organizes the world-only LGBTQ plus polo organization. Their annual tournament in Wellington, Florida, attracts players from Argentina to London and is held in the shadow of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach County. McKinney believes polo inclusivity stems from its international nature and the and team's dynamics. In the polo world, identity takes backseat to camaraderie and skill. The 2024 Lexus International Gay Polo Tournament presented by Douglas Elliman Real Estate kicks off April 4th through 6th. On Thursday, April 4th, the biggest the events 
begins with a VIP sponsors reception by invitation. Friday, April 5th, features the Polo Tini charity party benefiting Elton John AIDS Foundation. A portion of ticket sales aids the foundation's global AIDS fight. On Saturday, April 6th, the GPL tournament finals will showcase LGBTQ plus polo players from around the globe. Four teams buy for two GPL perpetual trophies, the Senators Cup and the Founders Cup. Held at the prestigious Patagons Polo Club, ticket starts at $50, and this is truly the sport of kings. I, I mean, uh, somebody invited me to go. I'm Ooh, considering going. Go. I know, right? <laughs> Who would have thought? But, uh, <laughs> you know, polo is something that is, you know, not very popular, even among straight people, even in this country. In Latin America, believe it or not, is 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 popular in some countries, particularly Argentina and Uruguay. Because there's horses running around everywhere, so you just <laughs> jump on one and get a stick and start playing polo. No? Uh, it's true, yeah, <laughs> but it, it's always it's always very uh, upper class, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. Yeah. It's not a cheap sport, but uh, but Argentina has very famous, uh, in particular one that and I love. Uh, polo uh, player. Uh, <laughs> Nacho Figueres. Of course if you, you know his name. If you're listening to me, Nacho, <laughs> you, I mean, we love you. Nacho Libre. <laughs> Hi, Nacho Libre. Nacho Figueres, who was the, the face of uh, Ralph Lauren uh, campaign. Oh. You could he's see also his. the ass of he, he's, Lauren. He's ah. gorgeous. He's straight, ah. very good looking, very good looking. Very pretty. Very pretty guy. But that, I guess that... I mean, I will go if it's there. Listen, so. <laughs> listen. Like Dale said, polo sounds to me like a very expensive sport to play, yeah, yeah. right? And you know, and it's in Wellington. <laughs> right. Foo foo. All right. And so, you know, I think very country clubby. You know, yeah, so yeah. if I'm being invited, I'm gonna go, right? Because right. that plus one thing it costs a lot of money. Mm. And gay boys, if you're looking for your next husband, boyfriend, or side piece, oh, that's a good this is where you need to go because these guys are fit. They make money. It's a wonderful location. Everybody dresses up, right? You're, you're kind of like Kentucky Derby kind of esque, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's and and it's a foo foo time for sure. So if you could slip in and try to blend. I'll try my best, right? And I'll try to find you a boyfriend. The, closest, the closest I get to that, it's like, Marco Polo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is close You're to so gay. Too. <laughs> You're Honey, so do you gay. think you could go to a high-class event and pass yourself off as rich? Well, clearly. Um, <laughs> and I love watching I and play. ride. So hey. I would gladly go with my husband because we love making friends. So I guess I will see you guys there, assuming you can afford it. <laughs> All right. Anybody ever play polo here at the table? No. Anybody? None of us. No. <laughs> Horses in the hood. Horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look around. Get on top of somebody and be like, ride them around. Uh, get, you, get a baseball. You meant ball. that? Yes, I have. Yes, okay. <laughs> that was last Tuesday after the gathering for you. You said horseback, yeah. not bareback. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dale, que más? Speaking of, next is Queer Up Entertainment. <laughs> Trans singer's heart crushing moment at American Idol moves, well, everyone for Trans Day of Visibility. Be it entertainment, music, literature, politics, or sports. The LGBTQ plus community is leaving its mark on every sector. Transgender singers like Shay Diamond and Laura Jane Grace are already popular for winning music lovers' hearts. Now, adding to the list is Amari, a 28-year-old waitress from Indiana. Amari captivated the American Idol judges with her heartfelt performance of Sarah Bareilles' She Used to Be Mine. Though judges liked it, Amari was given another opportunity to showcase her versatility, where Judge Katy Perry encouraged Amari to reveal more of her true self through another song. That is when Amari shared her moving backstory of resilience and self-discovery. She bravely talked about her story of acceptance and overcoming adversity. Despite facing challenges and losing loved ones during her transition, Amari decided to move on. Her courage and talent shone through her performance when she sang in an emotional song from Borella's musical, Waitress. This performance earned her a standing ovation from Katy Perry. While Brian offered constructive criticism, Perry and Richie enthusiastically supported Amari's journey and talent, giving her a resounding yes. Amari's inspiring audition is a reminder of the power of authenticity and the importance of visibility for transgender ind individuals, especially as we celebrate Trans Day of Visibility on March 31st. This is a really feel-good story. In a moment in time when there are not really good feel-good feel stories for our trans siblings. Mm -hmm. And her, the performance was very moving. Mm -hmm. If you've watched it, it's I very moving. It. Mm -hmm. And Katy Perry crying was everything. Oh. I really just loved it. And I think it's just one of those moments that you feel really special about. 
and I'm very happy for her and that she's going on to Hollywood. It's mm. super exciting. And it, it is a very brave moment that she shared her so openly her heart. It was very heartfelt. I, I was watching and it didn't happen at first. Just so you know, yeah, she performed she and then a different song first. Basically, like, right. she did Britney Spears Toxic. Correct. Why would she pick a that song? Choice. And then Katy Perry said, no, but, no, but right. Yeah. But, but I, I guess they kind of like sense that there was a backstory mm -hmm. and then by they the ask her yeah. more. Yeah. Right. Yeah, by the in ear. They got handed it. Right. Yeah. And then they ask her to sing something that will uh, be more reflected of, of her. her. Yeah. And, that's when, and she's a waitress. And she sang the song And that's when she said, that's when she started her story. And that was was so like you i was i, I was like crying and yeah. then they show her her boyfriend her boyfriend, the boyfriend, yeah. her boyfriend was outside waiting for her and you know she sang and when she sang that second song that was everything. that was it yeah. that, that was, was it look it. i gotta tell you that i haven't watched american idol for a very long time because of all those setups right every effing person that gets closer to hollywood has a dead mother a dead father they went through cancer their dog died yesterday yes. everybody and then that ominous music comes up and you know the sad right. story coming right so i got tired of that shit, and that's why i stopped watching american idol. Just... i did because i was just like how much so you know like it's Absolutely. just it was it, and you know i don't watch the show Show, it's so, this clip. It's so put together, clip, yeah. Dale. It's, it's so produced. scripted. It's, it's so produced. set up. Like, you can't have a talent without a sad backstory. You better kill somebody off because <laughs> they're not going to take you to Hollywood unless you got, you're missing a foot True. or something's going on because it's just, it's just, you know, they're in season 843. It's over. Paula's dead. I mean, you know, it's just so much <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but I, for yeah. this story, when I heard about it, I did watch you the did watch clip. Yeah, I had I did. to. Yeah, that's and it I was did. moving. Who I honestly believe that they told her, all right, sing some bad song. Sing Toxic. Right. Go, go, go. Literally. And then Katie, please, are you pregnant? Okay, so you're going through hormones. Okay, tell them that you want to hear another song. And that's what happened. And welcome to Hollywood, okay? But we support you, mama, okay? Oh, and and she's adorable also. She is yeah. such a pretty girl. Yeah. She is. What that's, do you have to say now? I have to say. I'm like, ready for I'm ready for No, training. no, I, I like it. There, you have never taken the words out of my mouth They've more been than just now. We've never agreed like, on anything. We, sometimes we do. But like, I just, it's hard for me to look at things. I like, I I'm glad watch. that there are more. <laughs> no, I'm glad that there are more trans right. the visibility is there. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, thank you, American Idol, for putting that out there. Mm -hmm. But when I just look at it, I just hear the producer in the ear. And I did <laughs> yeah, do yeah, part literally. of this American Idol thing before. And it's just like, okay, all right. Oh, that that girl is a trans or or you know she's whatever trans like woman, we yes. pull let, let's pull out the story let's get it we need we need tears we need tears, tears right, right, people right, right. Ominous you know? music, ominous music. <laughs> exactly so it's it's hard for me to like have that that feel good moment in the but way I, that you do but i, yeah, but I, I face... think there are some genuine moments within it i mean once they yeah you know i mean i haven't watched american idol in years mainly because i get annoyed <laughs> <laughs> because you're a singer honey. no you're i get a, but i get annoyed work. because we didn't have that when i was young oh. and it's, it, it sort of pisses me off that i didn't have that upper, those, you can those do it up, now. No, bitch. And, <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. 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 So, um, I mean, I have to come up with some of my stories. Oh, I was abused. Da, 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 da. Maybe, I, maybe I can work that angle. I'm like, just get on it. Yeah. But, but uh, they, pick, they pick that story. If they pick that story about trans inclusivity, Kudos for them. Yeah. I mean, that's something. That's yeah, not 600 needed. people that went across right. the stage it's that day. It's a thing. huge you know juxtaposition I mean? like, compared to back in the day where you had to hide your trans right. identity in order to make it far. Yeah. She was able to use her story, her trans identity, to make it further. So, like, girl, use it for what it's worth. So, Be your yeah. true self, love yourself, but, like, girl, you better moment. use it as best you can. Yep. Next, we <laughs> are <laughs> proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday international service at 10.30 a.m.
finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. LGBTQ Plus One Minute News lets queer up trans rights. UFC fighter Julian Oroso whips out his manhood in crazy anti-challenge to Leah Thomas. UFC fighter Julian Oroso's victory took an unexpected turn when he used his post-fight press conference to call out trans female swimmer Leah Thomas. After his win at UFC Fight Night, Arosa bizarrely challenged Thomas to transition into women's MMA, claiming he would transition into a woman to fight her. Despite Arosa's confusing remarks, Thomas, currently focused on law school, has not commented on the invitation to meet in some back alley. However, we think it would be fun to witness Arosa going through the hormone therapy necessary to transition. Arosa's remarks have sparked controversy, shedding light on the need for greater understanding and respect for transgender individuals in sports. I was going to say that I don't like cheaters. And so, uh, and I don't know how you guys feel about this whole um, uh, situation, but I don't like cheaters, and so I wanted to call out Leah Thomas. I wanted to encourage her to trans, or encourage him to transition from women's uh, swimming into women's MMA, and then I'll transition in, to become a woman, and I'm gonna beat that dude ass. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to say, because it's all, it's all about it's all about getting the you know getting you know a little bit of shock value. But uh, I mean. In the world that we're living in is just, you know, there's no common sense anymore and it's just, it's becoming a bit, you know, ridiculous and, uh, you know, obviously that's one of the big things that's always been in, you know, it's kind of going on now and I just don't agree with men, you know, uh, you know, in women's sports, you know, even the whole Fallon Fox thing, knocking, you know, and the girls that are, or guys that are fighting in women's MMA and knocking them out, it's like, it's a bad look. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up sports. In Mexico, soccer match suspended after anti-gay chants against U.S. player Matt Turner. A football match between the U.S. and Mexico was interrupted twice due to anti-gay chants directed at U.S. goalkeeper Matt Turner. The referee halted play during the nation's league clash after fans hurled homophobic slurs at Turner. Despite repeated calls to cease the offensive chants, they persisted, prompting the referee to suspend the game for almost five minutes. This interruption occurred just before full time, with the U.S. eventually emerging victorious. Turner, who also plays for Nottingham Forest in the Premier League and is married to Ashley Heron, also faced derogatory chants during the match held in Texas. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. April art exhibition Hotspots Happening Out Art Gallery welcomes diverse artists April 6th. Here's an opportunity to connect with fellow art lovers and enjoy the work of talented artists at the Hotspots Happening Out Art Gallery with Dennis Dean. The opening reception of the April exhibit is on Saturday, April 6th, starting at 6 p.m. Featured artists include Joel Baxter, Giancarlo Valiciano, Eileen Shalom, Ted Davis, Renee Farias Amores, Francisco Schaut, Adrian Walker, and Susan David. Further details on the gallery and other interesting events are available in Hotspots Magazine's new issue, which will be out this Thursday. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up politics. The eight old white men who run one million moms rail over commercial where all the men wear pink. Far right group one million moms target Hilton hotels in their latest campaign, accusing the hotel chain of promoting the LGBTQ plus lifestyle. The group takes issue with a commercial featuring Paris Hilton's and others clad in pink. The group said, quote, the hotel claim chain is obviously pushing the LGBTQ plus agenda with this commercial, which depicts individuals, couples and families all in obviously gender confused roles. End of quote. Hilton, known for its inclusivity, scored 100 on the HRC Corporate Equality Index. Despite the ad airing months ago, the group is urging followers to now protest. But Hilton's commitment to diversity remains unwavering. Hilton honors slaves. Obsessed. Points for a free stay? Yes, please. Upgrade. Loves it. All these perks. We're sliving. Totally sliving. I said that right? Yeah. When you want the celebrity treatment, no matter who you are, it matters where you stay. That's hot. Totally. Hilton honors. Hilton for the stay. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Lesbian thespians present perfect arrangement by Topher Payne at Sunshine on April 7th. 
Sunshine Cathedral Center for the Performing Arts promises an evening of laughter and drama with perfect arrangement by Topher Payne on April 7th. Set in the 1950s during the Red Scare, two State Department employees, Bob and Norma, are responsible for finding sexual deviance while hiding their own sexuality. Inspired by true events, the play explores the early days of the American gay rights movement with classic sit sitcom-style humor and thought-provoking drama. Presented by Lesbian Thespians, the event features free parking, beer, wine, and snacks. Tickets start from $25. Sunshine Cathedral Center for, for the Performing Arts is America's leading LGBTQ plus live entertainment series. For further inform information, visit sunshinecathedral.org. That is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community on the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV, possibly getting uh, a bonus look at uh, Bonnie's completely unfinished bottom half, as per usual, <laughs> of her drag outfit. We welcome you. Baby, my bottom's always finished. <laughs> Your News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells this type of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine happening on Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I think that Trini and Bonnie need to go get a room. <laughs> That's what I think. A jail cell. <laughs> Listen, whatever works. I'm your anchor, Faye. What? And on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the incredible anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Bonnie Builder, Trinidadi, Dino Mosquera, and Dale Stein. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you good night. Good night.